the 600i is it's really the origin equivalent of the RSI constellation. The constellation's kind of seen as being like a core ship integral to the game. So we're getting to the point now with the ships that we create of making like different manufacturers making the equivalent kind of competing ship to that one. There's two versions. Uh, the Explorer is designed for people who want to go out into the far reaches, explore some things, but also do it in a way that's comfortable and maybe a bit stylish as well. Um, the origin uh, manufacturer has always been quite luxurious and we really want to push that forwards um, going ahead with the new designs and you know, with the 600i. When we were initially designing uh, the, the new look, uh, we looked a lot at uh, BMW concept art. We quite liked the luxury car aesthetic to the origin stuff. So, you know, um, if you've seen some of the concept cars that they've been coming out with, they're pretty crazy. And we just like to bring some of that um, luxurious element to the ship as well, make it feel a bit more familiar and grounded. The main thing of the white box was to make sure that we could include the module in the middle of it because it's a modular ship, so you get to swap out the main core of it. At the moment, we've got two modules. One of them is like a grand luxury kind of module in the center, which is, you know, fireplaces and all kinds of glass, and it looks really s slick. And if you're inviting people on the ship, you're really kind of inviting them in there to show off. Where's the exploration one? We swap out that main core, and what you get with that is extra scanning stations. You've got a drop lift for a rover as well, and then additional cargo space. So if you're taking that out, exploring on planets, you can bring stuff back in your rover and you've got somewhere to store it as well. There's some space there for cargo as well. Uh, we've got these nice like, wall-mounted uh, grav panels. So if you're familiar with the grav plates on the floor, we've integrated them onto the walls now, so you can sort of stack them up uh, quite nicely. I think it's three high. Um, and then above, we have the scanning station. So that's two consoles um, with like a nice glass partition where you can actually look down from there into the garage and see what's going on below. And from there, you'll be able to scan, you know, you know planets, things, um, and, you know, make it quite functional, really. We've, we've built the central section with a scanning station on top and a like a garage below for rovers and ground vehicles. And We've tried to utilize the space as best we can. Actually, the origin aesthetic is quite good for that because it's quite minimalist and it's quite um, quite clean and sleek. So there isn't going to be a lot of like exposed panels and like wires hanging out and you know big, you know um, like panels with like warning on them. We've tried to keep it fairly subtle, so that the idea is we have these nice clean panels that you push in. Maybe they release outwards, and then behind that you get all the the technical stuff. But then just like you open up the car bonnet of say a nice like luxury car, it's not a mess. It's all very carefully considered. Everything is sort of. Um, you know, molded and, you know, that carbon fibre look and everything. It just looks really nice and clean despite it being quite rugged, you know. The touring uh, strips out all the central bits that had the garage and the scanning station and instead you get a nice, um, like, living space, I'd want to say. So if you wanted to transport people around in style or if you wanted to use it as maybe a, an executive ship or like a, you know, like a fancy transportation ship for dignitaries or something, like an ambassadorial ship, I think that would be the one to pick. Uh, so right now we haven't actually started that one, but the plan is to have really nice indoor like lounge spaces and spaces for ex extra beds and extra living space, essentially. So it's a little less functional, but more maybe I think when um, more player run events start coming in, you'll probably see them a lot more being used for, you know, uh, ambassadorial stuff. All we need to do is fit the metrics to what's already there with the exploration module and just swap the, the contents with um, the touring specs. So instead of having the scanning station and the garage, it'll be, um, you know, bedrooms, a lounge, maybe a hot tub, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how we feel. But uh, that sort of thing, basically. So that's the kind of thing we want to go for. Um, it's really cool to do that with the Origin stuff, just because it is a departure from how we've done stuff in the past. And yeah, I think um, people who own one are certainly going to feel like, <laughs> you know, they've spent their money well. It's kind of nice to work with a limitation. Um, and that's kind of what you get with having a modular system is like, you kind of have to base everything around this core layout. And by doing that, it, it kind of gives you more creativity because you're working against the restrictions. So you're finding creative solutions to them. We also looked at for the interiors, um, the designer, or the architects, Zaha Hadid, uh, they were quite interesting futuristic designs that are quite sort of seamless, semi-asymmetrical, uh, uh, quite futuristic designs and a lot of their buildings and um, design work. So we tried our best to kind of integrate the two together um, in a way that was quite interesting because, I mean, the origin ships look 
or are going to look very diff different to say like um, Anvil or Aegis. Like it's it's an entirely different approach we're taking with how we design them, how we implement the artwork and so on. But we want to try and keep it nice and like the shapes are quite flowy, they're, they're quite seamless. And then it's just about adding that nice little panel breakup to make it feel grounded and like, you know, quite realistic. Because if you just have one giant shape going through the whole thing with no obvious seams, it can feel a bit um, strange. Looking at the um, Origin series of ships, uh, I think as much as any luxury car is, it, as much as it is a nice functional vehicle, it's also a statement. So the types of players who are going to go for the 600i will be the kind of people who would like the convenience that you get out of having a Constellation, but also like to showboat. It's really going to be the case that when you see one of these flying around the verse, you're going to be like, wow, okay, that guy has really gone in for it. So yeah, it's kind of really there to appeal for looks as well as the gameplay as well. I imagine um, corporate leaders, um, guild leaders, traditionally speaking, um, in other MMOs, they, they would tend to have slightly nicer ships just to reflect their status as much as their wealth and so on because if they're running a big corporation they're most likely going to be the richest people in the corporation so yeah people people of standing i guess people who have earned quite a bit of money in the game who maybe want to show it off maybe try and not just sell their corporation but sell themselves as you know people to look up to and so on and um we're just trying to kind of nail that aesthetic with the way it looks. I mean, if you've seen it in space, it's this bright, white, sleek, elegant, sh you know, shape, basically. It stands out. And I think it'll always stand out um, compared to things like Anvil and, um, you know, the Aegis ships, which are more angular and a bit darker, a bit more rugged. Um, then this thing shows up and it's like, what's that? <laughs> you know, so I think that's the appeal. The way you model those um, and the way you integrate everything, uh, because of our custom normal system, um, we have to make sure everything's nice and smooth so that when the light shines off it, it doesn't warp and look all deformed and strange. And it's very easy to fall into that trap with this style, so we've got to be very careful. Everything has to be very carefully considered, make sure all the shapes sort of integrate themselves nicely into each other and flow, um, because if there's any sudden like terminations in, say, a shape or like a direction of the shape, it can look very jarring, it can ruin the style, it can look just wrong, you know, you just look at something, you know, that looks wrong. Um, so it's trying to avoid those pitfalls while trying to maintain this really nice, seamless, stylish look. I've personally been working a lot with the Aegis stuff in the past, and, you know, Aegis has a certain look, has a certain style, and when you get comfortable with that, it's fairly quickly to do. And then jumping onto the 600i, um, because we're progressing the style forward as well as everything else, it's a new challenge, there's new shapes, new new considerations to take. It's definitely one of the quickest ships in the game. I think it can definitely make a hasty retreat if it has to. If it can't, it is armed with some pretty useful weapons. Um, there's a turret in the back which sort of folds out of the, the hull, which is pretty cool. Um, so it can definitely defend itself. It will probably want an escort though, especially if it's carrying some important people. And for the exploration module as well, um, you'll probably be able to hold your own against things found in the farther reaches. So. Yeah, speed is key though, I think, with this one. One of the key features of to it, which you get regardless of the module that you've picked, is there's like a viewing lounge towards the rear of the ship, which has got a big glass canopy on it. We've done concept art where there's like holographic tigers and lounges to chill on, and it really kind of sells what the ship is all about, to be honest. I like the corridors particularly because we've been able to get some of the nicer elements in there, like the um, we've got this big stone wall. As you enter the ship, you, you sort of rise up through this elevator. The first thing you see is this big stone slab with, you know, origin um, written into it. And I just think it's such a departure from other ships. It's like, this is, you, you know immediately where you are, what you're in, what the context is, you know, when you see something like that. You know, I, I often think, what is, what is a symbol of um, luxury and fortune in space? And I think it's getting you know heavy objects into space is always a challenge, and I just think having a big piece of stone there it says like you know I've I got the money to afford this you know so it's for me anyway it's quite a cool thing to put little like details like that in there, and then also on the the elevator itself we've got these little leather padding, like going around the side of it with some like stitch work and things, so getting these little things in um, just to set it aside from everything else and above as well that's very important and the way the light reacts with the white paneling so we can make areas look cooler. Um, and in the corridors, we wanted it to feel more homely, so we've gone with warmer lighting. So yeah, uh, it's just balancing things out like that. It's it's been challenging, but it's it's you know one of those challenges you relish and you you want to get it right. So it's good fun. Mm -hmm.